Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and thank you so much for joining us for one of our talks today. I'm so excited today to be talking to the wonderful Jeffrey Boyer Chapman, all about his Disney Plus series, Doogie Cami Aloha, MD. And I wanted to start by asking about that journey that you always have whenever you're starting a new television show, because it's so much about both the creative team and the cast really figuring out not just who are these characters individually, but how does this all come together? And particularly for a show like this, where there's a real ensemble sensibility to it, and but not everybody necessarily has scenes with each other, at least at the very beginning. Um, and so what did that creative process look like for everybody really figuring out and navigating what they wanted this show to be and what they wanted the voice of it to be? Well, it was, it's such a good question because it was such a different process than what would normally um, be the case because of COVID. So we weren't together for cast rehearsals or table reads or anything. We did one table read for the studio and the network for the pilot over Zoom once all of us were in Hawaii or the majority of us were in Hawaii. Um, but it was really a matter of uh, of like just trial and error, honestly. So many uh, the writers have just an abundance of material and abundance of jokes. So this was my first time ever working in this way where we would get a scripted version of the scene. Um, and then when we arrived on set, we would have um, an entire set of sides with alternative jokes. They were called our alt sides for the day. So we would go through the scenes um, and shoot them as is two or three times. We were moving very quickly because of COVID. And then we would all have an opportunity just to throw in our alt jokes and kind of just like see what, see what landed. Um, so it was such a fun process because we didn't really have that that time to really get to know each other personally, um, you know, just like hanging out behind the scenes because we were all kept, you know, very much isolated for safety reasons. That was our opportunity to like really find our chemistry and find our flow with one another. So um, it was not only so much fun having that, like, uh, you know, exercising that muscle that I don't think uh, I've worked for a really long time, that improv and that like having to be so quick, but watching the show now, because I only really read you know, one version of the entire script. And now when I watch it, it's like I'm watching an entirely different show because there's, so, I never know what scene they're going to use, what take they're going to use, what jokes they're going to use. So it's such, yeah, it was a very interesting and different process this time around. And and the show is really mixing together a few different things. There's this family drama. It's kind of like a coming of age piece. It's also a medical procedural and, and your character fits into that space within the show as a medical resident. And was it easy to navigate figuring out what the tone of a lot of those scenes are because it's not shying away from dealing with really difficult situations you know there's a there's a patient who passes away in one of the first episodes and it's that idea of you know patient doctor care and and how do you approach that and what's it like when the first patient that you've gotten close to dies mm -hmm. um and but w was it easy to figure out what the tone of those types of scenes needed to be considering that it is at the same time still a young audience that are watching this as well as adults no, it wasn't easy, honestly. And like I said, because we had so many different versions of each scene that we were doing, it was really just a matter of, um, you know, just trying everything out, just having like the courage to to go forth and like just deliver whatever it is the writers are throwing at you in the moment and fail or succeed. Um, you know, it is, it's, it's a very grounded show. And I don't think that was something that I was expecting out of a, a you know, a Disney um, entity. I was expecting it to be much, you know, bigger and campier than what it was, but watching the first episode specifically, like it really pulls at the heartstrings in a way that I wasn't anticipating. So I think that with, with my character, um, Charles, Dr. Charles Zeller, the majority of my scenes are with um, Noelani, Mapuana Makia's character, and Doogie Lahela, uh, paid by Peyton Elizabeth Lee. Um, so as, you know, the majority of my scenes are in the hospital, so they can be, you know, medically focused. Um, but the thing that surprised me most, I think, was that so much of the show really is about the emotional components and the, um, the, the chemistry and the, uh, the dynamics between each character. Um, so, you know, when it came to the medical jargon and that portion of it, uh, I kind of went in blind and we were very lucky to have a doctor on set with us, Dr. Mark, who was there to help us with certain pronunciations of medical terms and, you know, how to hold a scalpel and put on gloves correctly and things like that. But I think, you know, uh, I, 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 we just really focused on um, just being present and connecting with one another and trusting that um, the medical stuff would kind of... Uh, you know, that we had we had the actual professionals help guide us in, in that way, but we just, I think we just did our best to um, just really find the grounded um, 
connection of of each character and how we all interact with one another, which I think we did really well, especially under the circumstances of like none of us having met prior to and not being able to spend a lot of time together off set. <laughs> Did you find also that the conversations that you were having uh, with with Dr. Mark, who was there, you know, to help with pronunciations, but also that that helped in terms of giving you a lot of contextualization of this is actually what it is, this is what you're talking about, you know, these are these are the medical details of something, and how did that really help you in terms of finding a lot of the context and layer in delivering some of that really procedural language within the show? Yeah, I mean, uh, surprisingly, and luckily, I didn't really have a ton of medical jargon. Uh, the majority of the medical jargon was really left uh, to Peyton and to Kathleen, um, who plays her mom, Clara. Uh, but having Dr. Mark there was so helpful. You know, obviously, being able to have, have him there to share personal anecdotes with us or um, really just kind of like drill into us certain medical terms like I can't even think of any example specifically, but like, you know, like there, there are certain words that are used frequently and certain words that are kind of used like sporadically. So he just like, he just was really um, clear on reiterating, like these are terms that you would have said dozens of times, if not hundreds of times. So um, having that context and then being able to go home and like use like WebMD and Google uh, was very helpful just to get like a, like to get like a, um, to have an understanding of what it was that we were talking about. Um, but like I said, the majority of our scenes is just, it's very much like character and emotion driven, not necessarily focused on, um, medical jargon, as surprising as that may be considering, you know, it's a hospital family dramedy. <laughs> yeah. And with the fact that it is so, so driven by the emotion and, and the connectivity between these characters as well within those scenes, was he the person that kind of helped you to understand just some of the details of, you know, this is how you would talk to a patient. This is how you would deliver this type of information to them. This is the way that you would contextualize and explain something or were there different spaces in which you really navigated the emotional landscape of that patient doctor relationship? Yeah, well, I think it all depended, right? Like, I mean, yes, Dr. Mark very much served as that, but it was all so on the fly. Like we didn't, it was very much done in blocking and rehearsal, like right as we're about to go shoot the scenes, we would walk through the scenes as you do um, to kind of choreograph it for all the for all the crew and the camera guys. Um, and in that sense, yes, Dr. Mark would be there to help say, um, you know, whatever it was, just, you know, to, to say that you would, to, you would, you would, you know, approach the... <laughs> Dog is popping up to say hello. Um, you would approach, you know, the the patient in this way, and you would. Hi, Nelly. This is Nelly. She's, I love it. Hi, she's buddy. A little star. Um, uh, uh, but you know, at the uh, at the same time, I think it was just so much about like reading the script and coming up with our own our own um, emotional journeys and backstory. Like, how long has this patient been there for? Are we just meeting them for the first time? Have they been there for weeks? Do we already have this rapport? So much of that is just like kind of up to our own individual choices. So like I said, because we moved so quickly due to COVID protocols, it was all like in the moment. But also speaking of that idea of, of making a lot of personal choices with backstory, the first couple of episodes that have aired so far, because it is that thing where they're trying to set up so many characters and give us a lot of detail of all of them, you know, at least in the first couple of episodes, we have only seen you in the context of the hospital and with your relationship with Doogie. Uh, but I know that you have said that there's a lot coming in terms of what's his romantic history, a little bit more about his family, what brought him to Hawaii because he's there for the first time. And he's someone who's probably never left the mainland before from Chicago. And so did you find that in, in building this character, there was actually a lot of space to have a lot of autonomy over shaping the idea of who this character was and a lot of those backstory details? Yeah, absolutely. And so much of that that I can say is directly lent to the abundance of, of alternative lines that the that the writers provided us with. So I, you know, I have this whole idea of who Charles could be, different versions of him, like in different alternate universes. Um, so, you know, a, a lot of what we actually shot and what we explored while, while filming, I'm so sorry, while filming the pilot episode, um, we, uh, you know, <laughs> no, come on. I'm so sorry. I don't have a puppy sitter here today. I'm so sorry. Um, uh, a, lo a lot of it was discovered through, th you know, through filming all of the alternate scenes. And then um, 
I didn't know what was going to end, what was going to air at the end of the day. So I got to like kind of play this fully developed three-dimensional human being on the day, which each, with each day on set, um, really having no idea which version of him is going to be presented to, um, to the audience. And within the fact that you're playing this character who has come to, you know, has moved to Hawaii, it's the first year that he's living there, and you have kind of noted that there is almost a little bit of life naivety because he's someone who has lived a little bit of a protected and sheltered upbringing with his family. I thought that was a really interesting viewpoint to bring into a character, particularly when you look at him in um position up against his friendship with doogie because she's also kind of on that same track where she's incredibly intelligent and at the same time there's just certain things that she just hasn't experienced in life yet because she's a 16 year old girl um and so did you and and peyton think a little bit about some of those similarities and, and some of those connective threads that were really part of what creates this really great friendship of, of immense respect between the two of them that was really something just that just played out in the moment because Peyton was actually 16 while we were filming, but has been working as an actor for the past decade, leading several series. She just has um, experience in this industry that so many people my age and older have never had before. So she has a level of maturity and um, like a work ethic uh, like no one else I've ever met at that age. So she very much brings that into everything that she does along with the natural, you know, um, uh, uh, life lived experiences of a 16 year old, but there's only so much that she knows. There's only so much that she has personally experienced. I, I very much brought in um, the energy of me, Jeffrey, at like 18 years old when I first left home and started modeling and moved to from small town, Alberta, Canada to, you know, major cities all over the world, living in Vancouver and Toronto and Cape Town and New York. And um, um, it, it was he, I, he, me at that age, I was so wide eyed and I was so naive and I was so driven and I had such um, a vision for myself as to what I was going towards and what I wanted to achieve and accomplish. Um, and, you know, very wide eyed and, um, and open hearted at that, at that age. Um, with a real grounded, um, you know, focus. So I feel like I bring bringing in like that that version of myself from that age mixed with just who Peyton is naturally, just kind of like brought the chemistry of of Charles and and Doogie to life. And in the fact that the show takes place in Hawaii, it's not something where it was just decided that Hawaii would be a beautiful backdrop and an interesting place to film it. It really becomes so much a center and a core of, of what the show is from the title to the way that it really wants to explore that idea of family and spirituality and connection to the space around you. And so for your character, given that he's someone who is new to the space and experiencing and learning a lot of these details for the first time, how did that influence certain character choices that you were making? I felt like I was learning right along with him. I'd been to Hawaii a couple of times in the past as a tourist for a week or so at a time, but living there for four and a half months and specifically during the time that we were there, I mean, it was right in the middle of COVID. So there were really, really strong travel restrictions to Hawaii. So it was my first time being on Oahu where the majority of the island was inhabited by locals, where there really weren't many tourists there. So as I was there and learning about, um, the, you know, the, the reverence and incredible respect that the locals have for oral history, for ancestry, for, um, you know, the, for, for nature and our connection to it, um, for uh, uh, Mahu people, uh, which are transgender people, which are held in such high reverence and um, esteem and so respected as like spiritual leaders and healers and witch doctors and kula teachers like um i feel like it really it it really didn't take much effort on my part as i was learning as jeffrey charles was learning as well um it was just such a wonderful priceless experience yeah and he has such such a striking energy and optimism <laughs> from the very first moment that we meet him on screen i feel like within the first two lines of dialogue that you deliver we get such a sense of of who he is as a character and, and the way that he treats people around him and given that you you were, you did have that opportunity to kind of try different things and explore different sides was yeah. that something that was always really clear to you from the offset on the page that that was going to be a central piece of him um, no, I didn't know what to expect, honestly. And I feel like the version of him in my original 
audition, and when I say original audition, it was my one and only audition, um, was it was was quite different than the than the Charles that ultimately ended up on the screen. I just knew that I feel like when I was in a position, you know, in the position that we were, where we had such little time to actually play with the material. Um, in the moment, it was about just making like really instinctual choices. And like I said, because I was really coming at him from the perspective of who I was at 18 years old, I just really tapped into that side of myself. And I remember there were elements of me that obviously still exist from that age, that time in my life, um, as much as I may have grown and evolved and changed in, in many ways, they're, they're, that, that core of me is still very much there. Um, and at, at that age specifically, because I think being a Black person, being a queer person, growing up in an environment where um, I was constantly having to explain myself. I was, I grew up in a very patriarchal, as many of us did, racist, homophobic environment, the town that I grew up in. So I feel like it was just such a, mu it was a muscle that was constantly exercised of me having to be disarming, of me having to come in wide-eyed with a big smile and kind of prove to people that what you may think of me or what you may think of what a black person is or a queer person is um you know that we're so much more that we are like you know fully developed nuanced individuals we're not a monolith and we're not scary we're not a threat um so i i feel like i that's that's who charles was as well i mean he's a black queer person so i feel like you know so many of us have that shared experience um so it was it was really fun to play but yeah in the original audition i remember he was much more um he was a lot sharper and he was a lot more cynical um and then i think it was just you know through from the time that i actually auditioned to the time that we went to film courtney kang the showrunner and writer of the show just kind of brought elements of who she saw in me to the page as well as the show continued to progress as you were shooting the first season, was there more of an opportunity to kind of have a bit more autonomy and have a bit more input and, and put forth certain ideas for him as a character as well? Um, you know, I, I think I was, it was a safe environment in which I could have done so, certainly, um, but it was, I didn't, there wasn't really any need for me to do so. Honestly, and, and like I said, because we had so many different versions of each scene and who he was, I, I was just ex I was just in I was just in it. I was just there, and I was just kind of like giving my all to whatever it was that was being presented to me, and just trusted that they would take the pieces of the puzzle and put it together to make a really beautiful mosaic at the end of the day. Um, there was, you know, I think there's something to be said about having a female-led project whatever it may be whatever industry you're in but because this this, this ship was held was helmed by courtney kang um who's a mother and who's a daughter and a sister and you know and is a really good friend she just has this really open heart and um created a really safe environment for all of us to not only bring our best selves but for all of us to bring our whole selves warts and all um on screen off screen um, the time that we did get to spend together personally one-on-one -on -one was very much towards the end of the season. So I think that a lot of the conversations we had around story, around character, around everything that I had learned about Hawaiian culture, a lot of that was discussed towards the end of the season. Um, and I could see her like mentally taking notes, like, okay, I'm gonna like hold on to that, whatever he just said there, that was interesting, that was impactful, that was inspirational, whatever that was. And I think that she's, she'll be very mindful about incorporating a lot of um, my own lived experiences and observations into season two, yeah. fingers crossed, <laughs> we'll get a season two. <laughs> And over the course of shooting the first season, how did you start to feel that your relationship with him as a character started to really shift and evolve as you started to really have a much stronger sense of who he is and, and have those moments where you start to go into shooting a scene and it's not, okay, well, maybe he would do this, maybe he would do this. It's going into a scene and saying, this is the choice that he would make. This is how he would be talking to this person. This is what this dynamic's gonna be. And so what was that journey of evolution for you in shooting the first season? Well, like you said, it was such a large ensemble cast. I mean, there are 10 of us. So it really just is so dependent on who he was talking to, you know, whichever character he was in any given scene in with. Um, so his dynamic with uh, Noelani, with Mapuana Makia's character, they have a very fun, playful, light, kind of like um, childlike dynamic with one, with one another. And that was something that just really naturally played out throughout the course of the season. So as we got deeper into the season, that was something that I was very much uncompromising on. Not that anyone directed me in a different, down a different path, but it just, it was just right. It was felt, it's what 
felt most natural and most real. Um, you know, same with Lahela. Uh, as the season went on, each of my scenes with her, um, you know, there's there's a real there's a real depth and a real respect that he has for her, and there's a real depth and respect that I have for Peyton. So um, that very much played into our dynamic. Um, and like I said, you know, because I was coming at him from such um, like a, a, a youthful, um, naive place. When when I'm in that place, personally at this age or when I was 18, I'm very vulnerable. Like my heart is so open and I'm just so emotionally affected by everything around me. So um, I, I think that, you know, we see his, his comedy, we see his like grounded, focused, mature doctor nature. And then we also see this like really open hearted individual who is so, grateful and so appreciative of the opportunities presented to him so appreciative of being so wholeheartedly accepted by um the people he finds himself surrounded with his chosen families his new colleagues at the hospital um i just remember what it was like being that age and um being transplanted all over the world as a model and constantly walking into new environments um and never really knowing what to expect and how much it meant to me when i was um when I found unconditional love and support and acceptance. Um, so bringing those, bringing that element into Charles was something that was definitely, you know, really ever present, especially towards at the end of the, towards the end of the season without giving too much away. Um, you know, just the, the, the stakes become a lot higher for all of us and um, our relationships and the importance of our relationships are, uh, very much the focus of the story as the season goes on. So, um, you know, all of those choices that I made came very naturally and I really wasn't met with any resistance. I think that, um, which is great, honestly, which is great at, at the point that we're in, in the world, in this industry in 2021, with queer rights, with the Black Lives Matter movement, um, people are much more willing to listen and to be open to just kind of sitting back and and seeing what marginalized individuals who haven't necessarily had an opportunity to share the truth of their lived experiences like see what we have to say and see how we say it and if you haven't lived it it's really it's not really appropriate or fitting or um, reasonable for you to tell me that what i'm doing is wrong because this is what i do <laughs> I also, you know, you're bringing up the idea of a lot of those interpersonal relationship dynamics. And, and one of the ones I thought was really interesting in, in how they approached it in the show is the fact that Lahela's mom is is there in a supervisor role to them at the hospital as a medical professional. Um, and they really kind of shied away from what we very often see, which is like, oh, you know, she's a tyrant and she's difficult to work with, you know, particularly looking at her as a female character in a position of power. Like yeah. there's a real, you know, again, just like it all comes back to the emotion and that connection, but it creates an interesting dynamic for your character, given his relationship and friendship with Lahela. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, this woman is his boss, mm -hmm. uh, also Lahela's mom. And so there is a little bit of an interesting shift in, in that dynamic. And so how did that inform what you wanted to create on screen in those moments? Once again, and it all comes back to the alt lines and the alt jokes because you know from day one i think in the in, i think it's in the pilot episode uh where you know lahela is being uh called by her mother to have like a little mini meeting in the hallway and as uh, my character and and nolani are walking away i think charles says something like how intimidated by her she is that when he received an email from her one time that he had to open it with his therapist like there was like five different versions of that scene it was like him coming from like like a place of like you know bowing down to her a place of like fear a place of like you know like kind of uh, like like chummy chummy like oh i love i love a strong woman in the workplace like just like completely enamored by her um there's so many different versions in you know in the first episode where, where there's a scene where we're at the ice truck with her husband benny and she comes up and asks me how i am and i like go into this like this starts going to this spiel about like how inspiring and like awestruck he is by life and Oprah, you know, had this incredible, like unforgettable quote. And um, we did that version, but we also did the version where he's like completely stumbling over his words where he's, you know, can't believe that he know that she knows his name and that he knows that she exists or she knows he exists. And um, I just played it. I just, I just had so much fun playing with it. And like I said, 
I've only seen the first two episodes. So I, and those were such a surprise to me because I didn't, I just didn't know what scenes they're going to choose. So it's, it's going to be as much of a reveal and surprise to me as it is for the audience as the season goes on to see like who he is and how he relates and interacts with all of these different characters that he finds, finds himself surrounded by because there's a million different possibilities. It's like a choose your own adventures for the writers and editors. I love the idea that that's such an experience that you get to have and just being like, I don't know, who is he this week? Yeah, that's very much what it was. And as an actor, obviously, when you get to take a character and especially when you get to jump in and be there right from the beginning and track them throughout the show, that is such a such a gift creatively as well. And in in taking a character like this in in the show and, and looking at something like Unreal as well, where you had the opportunity to really carry that character through so many different experiences and spaces. What have you found that it asks of you differently in terms of your craft, in terms of your process as an actor when you are? working on a television show with that opportunity to just constantly always be building new details, building new arcs, adding more elements to the backstory, you know, once you're on episode 10, once you're on season mm -hmm. five and those mm -hmm. sorts of things. Well, Unreal was such a different experience because that was the first time and only time that I've had a character written for me. So when we we shot the original pilot of Unreal and I, uh, I you know, booked the role originally, the character of Jay was this straight hustling sleazy womanizer who would sleep with all the contestants and was like just a total skis bag. And then we shot the original pilot. They scrapped the majority of it. We're like, we're reshooting this whole thing. We're recasting the majority of the show. And Marty Knoxon called me and said, we love you. And we love the version of you that we got to know behind the scenes. So we're gonna, we're gonna write Jay after you. So as as much of a blessing as that was, it was it was so much for me to wrap my head around, especially at that age and where I was in, in the industry at that time. Um, reading the version of him that they had written on the page and, and really relating to certain elements of it and other times being like, if I would never, I would never do such a thing. I would never say such a thing. I would never behave in such a way. And like having to get over that and realize there's only elements of me that they've incorporated into this character and the rest is like, it's fictional. Um, I, I, as, as, as soon as I found some like, some, some peace in that, I feel like it was, it was, I just found it was such a fun journey to like, to, to, play all the different sides of Jay, um, good, bad, and ugly. And there was a lot of bad and a lot of ugly in him, um, which was great for me, honestly, because at that time, I'm not to get too deep, but one of the best pieces of acting advice I've ever received um, was from Craig Bierko, who played Chet on Unreal. He gave it to myself and Sherry Appleby, um, get a good therapist. Uh, so I was with a really great therapist throughout the course of filming Unreal, and that really helped to to for me to acknowledge like the bad and ugly sides of myself, uh, which made it a lot less scary to bring those sides of myself to the screen. Whereas Charles, um, you know, I think that it was just as I mentioned before, being on a project that was um, run by a female and just having that safe space to. To jump, to jump off the edge of the cliff and like, and hope that you land softly. Um, sometimes you don't, you just have to have the courage to just, uh, to jump and fall and keep falling and bring, I just brought all of myself. That's all that, that's all that I could do. That's all I knew how to do. Um, and I knew that there's, you know, that uh, in order to, to really like, to, 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 to respect the writers and to respect the project and to respect the opportunity that was being presented to me. Um, that was the best choice for myself, just to bring all of myself and to see what is going to land and to see what is really gonna resonate with the powers that be and see what they um, you know, ultimately want to present the character as at the end of the day. But um, you know, it was, it, as you continue, filming a show throughout the course of the season, you really do develop like a rapport and a dynamic, not only with the cast, but with the crew and with the camera guys specifically. And they see so much. They're like right there in your face, seeing every, you know, every nuanced moment of everything that you're doing, everything that you're thinking, whether, the, you know, whether you're in character or not. And having the opportunity to make the camera guys laugh when I wasn't trying to be funny um, was, was just like the, the ultimate compliment it's the highest compliment because i knew that i was bringing something real to the table you know even in moments where, where charles was trying to be just super vulnerable and sincere um and i would have the camera guys busting out laughing it just i knew that um 
truth is always like the is always the most um, enticing element of humor to me. Um, so I knew that that it was just it was it was a matter of just constantly bringing the truth of who he was to every single moment. And sometimes it was going to be funny. Sometimes it was going to be heartbreaking. But it was it was it was such a fun journey. Such a fun journey. I I really love hearing all of that. And and with this show as well, I'm so interested now to see where all of the different choose your own adventure spaces land for your character throughout the rest of the season. And thank you so much for sharing all of this, Jeffrey. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. It's so much fun.